So welcome to our webinar, how to create and send your first email in Constant Contact. If you're a note taker, you can grab a pen and paper, but if not, don't worry, you are gonna receive a recording of this webinar uh, sent to you later today. Uh, usually about four hours after the webinar ends, we'll email you out a recording. During today's webinar, we'll spend about 25 minutes or so uh, going through our presentation today. I have a lot of good tips and concepts for building an email. Then we'll log into a live Constant Contact account and I'll walk you through the steps to accomplish everything we learned. And then there will be some time at the end for Q&A as well. Before we fully dive in here, I did wanna let you know, Constant Contact has a lot of different tools that you have access to in your account. We of course have our email marketing campaigns. That's what we'll be looking at today, how to create a really good email to send out. We do also offer email automation and welcome emails. We have list growth tools to help you grow your lists in constant contact. You can create digital ads for Google, Facebook, and Instagram to help you find new customers and to build your email list. You can also post to social media from Constant Contact. Stay on top of your social media efforts by creating posts and replying to social messages as well. And then we do have SMS text marketing as well. That's something you can add on to your plan and expand your marketing reach even further. We've got all of these great tools, all these features, our expert guidance, all in one place. But with that said, let's dive in. Let's focus on some email marketing today. And I wanna start by taking a look at this email created several years ago by a Constant Contact customer named Peter, and he owns The Cheese Shop. Now, by a show of hands, how many of you remember receiving or sending emails with this sort of format, with a lot of text, multiple columns? Just by a show of hands, is this something you've seen in the past or maybe even today? Okay, yeah, I see a lot of hands coming up here. So email marketing today allows you to reach your customers or members wherever they are, which includes their mobile phone. And 2.5 billion people in the world own smartphones and approximately 60% of emails are opened on a mobile device. So an email like this one that we're seeing on the screen would be really hard to read on a mobile phone, probably almost impossible, lots of scrolling, zooming, all of that. And it took Peter a really long time to create this email, as you might imagine, with all that text in there. So those are just a few reasons why you don't want an email with a layout like this. Instead, what we recommend is creating a reusable master template that looks like this one here on the screen. The design's much more simple and it's mobile responsive to look great on any device. It'll require little time and work up front to get your master template put together, but then from there, it'll help you create emails more quickly. You'll set up a master template to match your branding and include social media and contact information that'll remain consistent over all your emails. And then when you are ready to create and send an email campaign, all you have to do is make a copy of your template you've made for yourself, add in some content and send it out from there. So it really does make it easier for you to get your email marketing out the door and look great when you have many other hats to wear for your business. Before you spend time creating your email campaign, it is important to think about what you wanna send. We recommend sending an email at least twice a month. And there's two types of emails, kind of two different approaches you can take with your email campaigns, which are a promotional email and non-promotional emails. Promotional emails have a date associated with them. And you're really encouraging readers to take a specific action to buy a product or service. 
With this, you're looking to directly drive revenue or some sort of action with a promotional email. The call to action for a promotional email may include registering for an event, redeeming a coupon, or making a purchase or a donation. And then a non-promotional email is less sales driven and it's more focused on building relationships and providing value to your subscribers. With this type of email, your call to action will drive people to your valuable content. So that may include watching an educational video, downloading an ebook, or viewing a list of product testimonials. Ideally, you do wanna send a mixture of these types of emails because no one wants to be sold to all the time. They don't wanna feel like you're advertising, you're always trying to get their sale, providing just helpful information really helps build relationships. And from there, it does entice them to make a purchase down the road. But no matter what you choose to send, the design is going to be the same, no matter what. You'll notice these email examples here on the screen do look similar. It's really just the content that's different. So with that, framework and basis there for getting started with email marketing, let's take a look at our agenda and see what we're going to go ahead and accomplish today. First, we're going to review the seven essential elements that you need to design an effective email campaign. And then, like I said, we'll jump into a live demo account and I can show you how to create your own reusable template to save time. And then we will discuss how to write your email to get your readers to take an action. And I'll show you how to use your reusable template and add in the content for your email campaign right in Constant Contact. And just one more quick introduction here. So my name is Caitlin, like I mentioned. I'm a manager on the professional services team here at Constant Contact. I've been at the company going on 10 years now. So I have a lot of experience with Constant Contact, with online and email marketing, and just excited to dive in here and uh, help you learn how to create and send your emails. So let's start by looking at the seven elements that you need to design your email. No matter which type of email you're sending, you do need these seven elements that are designed to drive action and make your email easy to read. I'm gonna give you a brief overview of the seven elements and then we will break it down and dive into each one a little bit deeper. But the first thing is gonna be the header information. That's the first thing people see in the inbox. It lets them know who the email's from, who to respond to and what it's about. Then we have our pre-header. That's a line of text that appears beneath or after the subject line in the inbox. And it's the first thing someone would read after your subject line. And then your logo and company colors. These will be used to reinforce your brand and make it easy for people to recognize your business. And then you always want an image to support your message. This image will be used to entice your readers to take an action. Number five is the message body. This contains information about your offer and how it'll benefit your audience. Then number six is to give your readers one clear action to take. So that could be anything from buy now to pledge your support to donate now, read more, get yours today, things like that. And you'll wanna use a clickable button to make it easy for your audience to take that action. And then number seven is the footer information towards the bottom of your email. Just make sure you're showing readers how they can connect with you further, both online and offline. Add your contact information, hours, as well as buttons with your active social channels in this area. It's pretty simple and you only need these seven elements to create a successful email campaign. When we get to the demo, I'm gonna show you how to create a reusable master template that has all your branding and footer elements. 
And then once your template is set up, the only things you need to edit are these ones right here. So with all that, kind of running through these seven here, let's now break it down and look at each of these in greater detail, give you some tips and just how to implement them. So starting with the header information, you may not think that this plays a big role when you're talking about email design, but we do include it here because it's the first thing people see in their inbox. It's your first and only chance to catch your reader's attention and get them to open the email. People are making quick decisions in their inbox every day, so you really want to use this to your advantage. So the from information is what displays first for your contacts. This is comprised of the from name and the from email address. Ideally, you do wanna use an email address from your business domain and the from name will most likely be your company name. Once you've chosen recognizable from information, stick with it to avoid confusion for your readers. So on the slide here, we have an example from Southside Cycling. So you can see they put their from name as Southside Cycling. And then the email address that it's coming from is bikes at southsidecycling.com. So that's gonna be really recognizable to their customers because they will recognize that business name. And then the reply to email address. So typically the from and reply email address is the same. The key here is that someone's going to receive and monitor the email address for replies. The from and reply email addresses are two sections that you won't need to change with every email. Usually this is something you'll set it up in your reusable master template and then you'll be good to go. That said, you will need to change the subject line and pre-header text with every email you send. When thinking of subject lines, think small. Four to seven words is the ideal length for a successful subject line. And you just wanna provide a quick glimpse of what the email is about. Some people even find it easier to write the subject line last after they've created the rest of the email because then you have a much better idea of what the email is about. And sometimes you can find a, a clever phrase, you know, some wording in the text you've already written that works well as a subject line. So you can pull it out of what you've already written and, and make that what they see in their inbox. But do whatever works for you there. Now the pre-header text displays below or after the subject line in the inbox. Your readers will typically see five to eight words in this area, so use it as an extension of your subject line to further grab the reader's attention. Think of it as your last chance to grab their attention. So these are the elements you'll need for the header. Now let's talk about the actual design elements of the template. No matter which template you choose, you wanna make it look like your brand. So first, you definitely need to place your logo in the top left or center. This ensures your brand is recognized right away because it's the first thing your subscribers see in the body of the email. People are used to clicking on images when shopping online, on websites, so it's really important to make all your images clickable links as well. And I'm gonna show you how to do that in the demo. You do also have to use your brand colors. Now, how many of you already know the hex value for the colors of your brand? Do you know, you know the exact shade of the colors that you use? Raise your hand if you do. Just out of curiosity. Some people do. Some say they, they know the approximate color. Michelle is saying she knows they use blue and green. Okay, well, if you don't already know what your brand colors are, if you don't know exactly what shade of green or blue or whatever it is that you use, you can use free color match tools. There's one called Color Cop that we like, 
or digital color meter is on Mac computers. And those help you identify the exact brand colors used on your website and your logo. You can also install Google Chrome has an eyedropper extension if you don't want to install something on your computer. And that those are ways you can just find those colors and get that all set up correctly. Together, the logo and brand colors do help establish a consistency throughout your email that represents your business. Once you've set up the template with the branding elements, then you do want to select a compelling image. Photos make your marketing communications come to life and they grab the reader's attention. So choose an image that supports your message. If you're having a sale on a particular product, include a clear image of that product or someone using the product. If you're promoting an event, use a picture that captures the fun people had at the last event. In this example, Southside Cycling has included an image of the inventory that they are promoting. Just like with your logo, you want to make your supporting image clickable as well. So make sure it links to the same place as your call to action. This image is something you'll switch out for each email you create. So when we're making our reusable master template later, we'll put in a placeholder for that image. All right, let's talk about the next element, which is the headline. Because your main goal is to inspire more action from your readers, you do want to give special attention to your headline. The headline should catch readers' attention and should be the largest text in your email. So we recommend a 24-point font and to use one of your brand's colors. Once you've piqued the reader's interest, the message body is where you provide detail to the readers about the offer. This is where you give them the information that they need to take the next step. Keep your text short and sweet, no longer than 20 lines of text so you don't overwhelm your readers. And we recommend it should be around a 14 point font and use a dark text on a light colored background just to make it easy to read. Too many font styles can be distracting, so choose no more than two and make sure your formatting is consistent throughout the email. Once you've added in your text, you need people to take an action. So let's talk about how to do that. When it comes to designing your email, you should never send an email without asking your audience to do something. That's kind of the, the main point for email marketing. So this is called the call to action. That's how we refer to it. You'll want to use a button to grab your reader's attention and make it easy to click on. And also make the button pop with a color that matches your brand. You'll want to make sure to use action-oriented words on your button to engage your audience. Think of things like order online or register by June 1st, or request a copy, or download our guide. When people click on your button, you also want to make sure they go exactly where you want them to. If you want them to purchase a product, drive them to the exact page where they can purchase the product. You don't want to send them just to the home page of your website, because then they'll have to search around to find where you want them to go, and they may just close out of the window, they're busy, and, and forget about the message then. The image, paragraph, and your call to action all work together to get your audience to take action. And Katie has a good question. What type of font would you recommend? I'm using Century Gothic, but looks very thin. Yours looks better. Yeah, we can take a look at all the font options once we're uh, in the template there and building it. The one in the screenshots, I think, is just Arial, um, just sort of the normal one. The one on the slides, we it's called Lexend. Um, some companies have a required font for your brand, so if that's the case, you'll want to use that or something close. Not every font comes through perfectly in inboxes, but we can look at the, the options that we have in our editor and you can play around with it too. Send yourself a test email and see how it looks. 
All right, moving on to the last part, which is the footer. This is the stamp of useful information at the bottom of your email. The best part about this is that you can set it up in your template and then forget it. You only need to update it if something changes to your contact information. So be sure to include contact information, website, hours of operation, and definitely social media buttons so people know how to get in touch with you if they have questions. And that's it. Those are the seven elements of email design. So with that knowledge in mind, we are ready to create a reusable master template. So let me pull up my constant contact account here and we will dive into that. So just remember setting up your reusable master template, this is really going to be your first step in helping you create emails quicker in the future. We're just going to put together an outline, a generic template that you'll make a copy of each time, fill in your content and send out quickly. So to get started with that, I'm going to come up here to campaigns. This is where every marketing campaign that you do in Constant Contact is saved. And then we'll hop up here to the top right and click create. And then, like I mentioned on that slide at the beginning, we have tons of marketing campaigns you can do with Constant Contact, but today we're focusing on email, so let's click into that. And then it's going to bring us to our template picker, and we will need to choose a template. And you can choose any one of these that you want, even if it's not your industry or not quite the message you want to say. You really just need to find something that you think would be a good starting point, and then you can edit pretty much everything in there. You can see there's holidays, lots of different things. What I'm going to do though is I'm going to come up and choose the blank one just so you can see how to build it completely from scratch if you want to, but you definitely don't have to start from scratch. You can start with any of those templates. I just want to make sure you see all the different editing functions there. So Starting out here, I am going to give this a name. You'll see here in the top left, it's just an untitled email campaign right now. So let's edit this. I'm going to call it Master Template. Make it very clear what this is. And I'll put today's date as well. And we'll save that. And only I see that. That's what shows up in the campaigns page. And then we'll just go through sort of those seven elements that we were talking about. And the first part of that is this header up here. So we're going to click into that and we can set this all up here. So this email is going to be for a restaurant called Jack's Backyard Barbecue. So that's what I'm going to use as the from name. So let me type that in here, Jack's Backyard Barbecue. This is the name of the restaurant, so it's very recognizable to our readers. Now, a lot of times you set up your account under your business name, so it might even be filled in automatically already, but you can put whatever you want there. Just make sure to have it be the same thing every time so that it's recognizable. Unless you have two different businesses, some customers of ours have multiple businesses, and they change the from name depending on what business they want it to look like it's coming from. So that's always an option there. But for the sake of this, this is going to be Jack's Backyard Barbecue's master template. So that's what we're going to go with. And then the from email address, I'm going to update to jack at jacksbackyardbarbecue.com. If your email address isn't showing here yet, you can click this, add another email, it'll actually, you have to verify your email address that you're using. So it'll send an email to that inbox. You click to confirm that it's a real email address basically, and then it shows up in this list and you can choose it as the from email address. And I'm gonna do the same for the reply. The reply email address is when someone hits reply on their 
email program, this is the one it'll go back to. So you just want to make sure that's an email address that you'll get replies at in case someone does reach out to you. All right, so the subject line in the pre-header, that changes each time. So we're actually going to leave that as the default text for now, since this is our just our master template. So then I'll click Save, and that is good to go for now. Next, we need to come down here and start building out our design. So first, I'm going to just delete this text box. So I'm going to click into it and click this trash can here. So I don't want that. I really am going to kind of build this up from scratch. So the first thing, if you remember from our seven elements, is the logo. So in order to add that in, I'll come over here on the left side. You'll see there's an images option. From here, you can upload an image. That's this here, upload images, and then browse your computer, find the one you want. We have stock images. You can pull them from your social media pages, your phone, if you have our mobile app. But I already have it uploaded. I just need to find it here in my library. Here it is. So it's just a drag and drop. So I'm going to drag and drop it right there so that it is at the top. And let's make it a little bigger too. Don't want it too big because then it'll take up too much space, but we do want it to be visible. And then as I mentioned, a best practice is to make all your images clickable links. So for the logo, that you can link back to your homepage of your website. And to do that, I will click on the logo, click this chain link here. We're going to link this up to a web page. And then let me actually have it off screen. I'll just copy and paste it in. So that's Jack's Backyard Barbecue website. Insert that. And now this is clickable. So if someone were to click on this, they would go to the website. Next, we need to add in a placeholder for an image. So with this being our master template, we're not going to add in the image itself yet. We're going to give us a, a placeholder for that supporting image. And that's just going to be under blocks. You'll see there's a lot of different blocks I can drag into here. And I'm going to do this image placeholder. And that's what it looks like there. We'll come back to that when we, we're actually going to use this master template to create an email. So we'll come back to that when we, we get to there. All right, so next we want to do a headline, and that's under the layouts here. So I can either double click on this block and it'll pop down to the bottom, or this also, everything is drag and drop from the left if you'd rather do it that way. So there's a couple different headlines. This one, it's kind of hard to see, but it has a color in the background, and then this one is just text. I'm going to delete this one. So as I hover over, hover over it, I'll click on this gear and click trash, and then we'll leave that there. And I'm just going to leave the default text for now with this being our master template. So now let's come back to the left. I want to add a text box. So that's going to be one of the blocks over here. Drop that in. There we go. And then if you remember next on our seven elements list is the call to action, which we recommend a button. So we'll just drag and drop one of those in. You can see it, it comes together, together pretty quickly um, once we start getting into the flow here. And then finally, we need to create our little footer information. It's always good to have that little section at the bottom with your contact information. And this you can set up however you want, but I want to do one of our layouts that you can work with is a two column layout. There's actually even a few different options if you want color or not. 
or something with the border. Let's try the border one. I'll drag and drop that in. You'll see what that looks like here. Now I don't actually need pictures, so let me click. Oh, let's, let me undo. I accidentally deleted the text box. Okay, so we'll delete the picture. Delete this one. Sorry, my computer's lagging a little bit here. Delete. There we go. So now we have our two text boxes next to each other. And something I'm going to do as well, we have this spacer option. If you ever need extra space, that's what that's for. You can see this is coming up right against the bottom. I don't like how that looks. So I can drag this spacer down there. And now you can see it added that blank space. That looks a lot better. So then what I need to do is add in that contact information. So I'm going to highlight this text and delete it. And let me copy and paste in. I'll do the name of the business and the address. And let's, we could maybe bold this. You'll see this works just exactly like a, any other sort of Word document, text editor, things like that. And I am going to put the website address here as well, which this I can highlight and link this up as well. So you see that's like a clickable link there now. And then on the other side, let's delete that. I'm going to do the hours and the phone number. And then maybe we'll bold that. You can kind of just, you know, keep working with it however you want. I, I'm going to right align this. And then that's already left aligned. So there we go. I think that looks good there for my footer. And finally, the last thing I want to make sure to have in that footer is my social media information as well. I want to give people the opportunity to find me on social media easily. So that's going to be this social follow option here. Let's just drop that down at the bottom. And it'll add in some buttons, which let me actually drag that above the spacer. And you can even make the spacer smaller. So then what I do is click into this section here and it'll pull up on here so I can make adjustments and then edit is where I can actually choose the buttons themselves. Maybe I, I like this gray and then when you click on social pages, you'll put in the actual links to those pages. So let's do Facebook. I can copy and paste that. I could put in the website again if I wanted to. And it's, I have a space there at the end. We could do, yeah, like I said, the, the website. I could add lots of things, Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn, Pinterest, YouTube. You see them all there. Google My Business, TikTok even. Uh, let's say maybe I, I also have Twitter, so I can add that and then link that up. I think you get the idea there. All right, so that's looking good here. Katie has a question. Is there a layout that allows text wrapping around a picture? We have a small headshot that, um, in a message from our director announcement. And she's only seen how to, yeah, have it in the left column or the right column, but we're hoping to have it wrap around. 
So yeah, there is a way to do that. And actually, instead of using a layout, what you can do is drag in an image into the text box until it it shows this like square. It's kind of hard to see, but then you'll see as I make it smaller, the text starts wrapping around it. If I, let me add more text so you can get the idea here. So let's say I have this much text, then you can see how it wraps around like that. So that's how you want to do it, is just drag it right into the text box. All right. Well, with that, the only thing we have left to do is add in our branding colors. So we have the logo, but now we need to change some of these colors a little bit. So let's come to the design option here on the left. And this is where we'll go through and edit all of these different things. Now I mentioned earlier, if you're not sure what your brand colors are, there's color match tools. The one I like to use is called Color Cop. Uh, this you can download from Color Cop dot net and then it's a program on your computer you get a little window like this so then you take this dropper hover it over the color and then it gives you what's called a hex value right here so then I come to my color go to advanced and I can copy and paste in the hex value and there we go it's the same exact shade of orange there. Same with the border. If I wanted to make that the brown that's in the logo, we just drag it over like that. Copy, paste that. There we go. And actually the border right now is zero. So if we actually wanted there to be a border, we would make that number bigger. Maybe we'll do like a thin border like that. You can edit your fonts here. So going back to um, the question earlier from Katie about fonts, here's all your options. So these are the ones at the top are the more standard ones that display most uniformly across all devices, but there are other options down here as well. There is Century Gothic. What's the one you mentioned, I believe? Yeah, you're right. That is kind of thin. So you could, you know, see what other options are in here and, and see what's the easiest to read. But you go through, you can edit the heading, I'm gonna edit the color of the heading. Once I use a color, it's in the recent colors, which is nice. So I'm just gonna make that the orange. For the sake of time, I'm not gonna update all of these. Let's make the button brown. Tie that all together. And I think that's good for now. With your master template, you would wanna go through, just make sure everything is set with your branding so that that you don't have to change that each time. You'll just get it all set up. Let's actually update the dividers too, to orange. And the, oh, this is the one I wanna change, article layout border. I think that's, that updated it. You can play around with it and make sure it looks exactly the way you want. The color matching program, let me type it into our chat window here, color cop, Dot net. All right, so we have our master template. It's good to go. So I'm going to, it auto saves. So you'll see it says saved. I usually like to click save as often as I can as well. And then what we're going to do is come back to campaigns. So we'll actually exit out of this. When I'm ready to create an email, I will just make a copy of this. 
So you click on the three dots and click copy right here. That leaves our original intact. And it's going to pull open a copy for us to edit. So let me rename it. We're going to create an email for a brisket promo and save that. And then we will come back to this in a second. I want to go over a couple different tips for content for your emails and then we'll fill in our content in a minute. And I particularly want to show you how to inspire your readers to take action. So as we were talking about, every email should have a supporting image that draws your readers into your message. So if you can use your own photos, that is best. But if you can't, there are free and paid stock photos within your Constant Contact account. You don't want to use just any image you find on the internet as you could find yourself in trouble regarding copyright laws. So if you don't want to use the stock images in Constant Contact, there's one I recommend called unsplash.com that has a ton of free stock photos as well. And just make sure to use or avoid using photos that look too staged. You do want images that look natural and realistic because those are just received better. When you download a photo, make sure the image is between 600 and 800 pixels wide. That's usually the length of our templates and that'll just give you the best quality there. And one thing that we get asked a lot is, what should I say and how do I say it? So let's talk about the structure of your email to encourage people to take action. There's three questions. If you can answer these three questions, you can write a persuasive email. First, what are you offering? From a design perspective, that's your headline and its goal is to stop the reader, pique their interest and make them wanna read more. That leads them into the message body, which is how will it help the reader? This text should pull the reader toward your call to action. So you only really need three to five sentences or about 20 lines of text to give your reader the information they need. Then for the call to action, you're answering the question, what should they do next? Tell them specifically what it is you want them to do and make sure the call to action is easy to find and click on in the email. Now, if you're not doing something promotional or you don't sell things, you're not in retail, you're in a nonprofit, the th three questions will be slightly different. So the first, the headline would be, what are you trying to accomplish? The message body, you have to answer the question, why should the reader care? This text should elaborate on the problem or topic and provide details to explain why they matter to your reader. That's something just to, in general, keep in mind with email marketing. Why should they care about this and why would they want to take this action? Just always keep that in your mind. And then the call to action would be, how can the reader get involved? Invite your audience to take part in solving the problem and helping your cause or learning more about the topic you're discussing. These simple formulas will help you write your emails text. And really, it just comes down to keep it simple. In order to inspire your readers to take action, you've got to keep your email short and sweet. So when you're copying that reusable master template, all you need to update is a picture, paragraph, and call to action, and that's pretty much it. So with all that said, let's jump back in and edit that email we made. So this is, like I said, gonna be a promotion for the brisket at the restaurant. So the first thing that we need is to come back into the header and edit the subject line. So instead of the latest news for you, I'm gonna say, bring a friend for smoked brisket. And then the pre-header will be, you don't want to miss this deal. So we're catching their attention. They're seeing, oh, there's a deal in the email. And then everything else was set up from name, from address. So I can just click save. 
from there, we need to add in our image. So that is once again going to be from this images section here on the left side. And let's use this picture of the brisket. That'll entice people to come in because it looks delicious. We'll make it a little bit bigger so people can see it. And there's actually one of these spacers underneath it. I'm going to delete that. I think that's too much space. There we go. And then this we want to make a clickable link like we did with the logo. So I'll click on the picture, click link, web page. I'm going to have this go to the same place as the call to action. The call to action is going to be to make a reservation. So I'm going to have this go to the page on the website where they make a reservation. All right, moving right along the headline, what are we offering? Let me copy and paste in. We're going to say buy one smoked brisket entree, get the second at half price. Paste. There we go. Next, we have the body text. So let's delete all this filler text here. And remember, this is where we're answering the question, how will it help the reader? So let me copy and paste in here. And I won't read this all out loud to you, but basically we're telling them about the offer and leading them into the call to action by saying make a reservation to ensure you can take advantage of this deal. So for that, we'll click on the button, click link, link it to a web page, and then we'll change the text on the button to say make a reservation. And then once again, just copy and paste in a link. Let me grab that. There we go. And that's it. So I know I had some stuff pre written out and was just copying and pasting, but really that took me, you know, two minutes to create my email because I had that master template set up already. So now we're ready to send it. But before we send it, we always want to go through and kind of double check everything. And you can do that here from this preview and test option in the upper right. So the preview will just give you an idea of what it looks like. You can click on all your links in the preview to make sure they work. All the templates are mobile responsive, so you can see how it'll look on a phone. And then you can over here, we'll close out of it. You can send a test. So you can type in up to five email addresses and it'll send it to those people. And it's just as a test, it's not like the real send. So it will say at the top, this is a test email. And then you can see how it looks like in an actual inbox as well. But once that all looks good, it's all tested out. And actually one more thing here is the check for errors, which I like. That'll go through and make sure you took out all the default text. It has suggestions for your subject line, pre-header, all of that. But if everything's looking good, to send it, you'll just click continue. Choose the list you want to send it to, which is right here. So let's say I have... I have quite a few lists in our account, but we'll send it to just our general interest list. We want everyone to get this one. You can make last minute changes to your header information there. Then you can choose send now, and just have it go out right now, or even schedule for later is always a good option. And then you can choose a date and time. And this is always based on if you look at your reporting, as you start to send more and more emails, you can see what times people are opening your email and what days get the most opens, and then that can help influence when you want this to go out. And also, because this is a time-sensitive promotion, that would influence what I'm choosing here as well. But then you just click Schedule, 
and it'll send automatically at that time. Most people open your email within the first 48 hours of receiving it, but you will start getting reporting back right away. So you can see that on this page, it's not showing yet because it hasn't sent, but once it sends, you can see it here, or there's an actual reporting tab where you can dive in and see all of that. But that's really everything. We've just created and scheduled our first email campaign with the help of our reusable master template. Now, one thing to note, your constant contact plan determines which features you have access to in your account. So if you wanna see a breakdown of the plan you're signed up for, you'll just click on your name here in the top right and go to plans and pricing. That'll break it down for you. And I can even share an FAQ link so you can see how that works as well. All right, but with that, let's go ahead and wrap up. And I know we're running close on time here, so we'll make sure to get to your questions as well. And actually, let me get to this one from Katie before we wrap up. So Katie asked, does all the formatting we see on our computer screen get maintained when users view the message on their phone? Do you recommend we send a test and that we check views on computer and phone? Yeah, I definitely recommend sending a test and check it in both places. That's your best bet. The, the preview that I showed you, let me unschedule this. It gives you a general idea of how it'll look on desktop and mobile, but sometimes different email programs have slight little quirks that make it look different in different places like Gmail, or Outlook or the different programs. It's usually not a huge difference, but it's good to test that and see how it looks. So if I were to come back to edit, that'll give me the preview. But then yeah, definitely send a test and just make sure all the links are working and, and all of that. And then Buzz asked about email authentication. It's not updating, propagating in DNS. Should I wait until authentication is complete to start sending emails or is it okay to start now? I would say if you're concerned about deliverability, um, we actually have a deliverability department that you can call into at Constant Contact to get advice on your particular business and content and what you're doing. Um, at the end, I'll share our help resources. You can look up the phone number and get in touch there. I would say you don't necessarily need to set up authentication to send. Constant Contact just on it on its own has a really high delivery rate, um, the highest in the industry. But if you're working on setting that up, you may want to wait. I don't have a 100% answer on that. I would talk to our deliverability team because they can diagnose and dive in and, and help you out with that. All right, well, let's wrap up and keep sending those questions in. We'll get to those as well. So let's look back at Peter's email from earlier. He took the time to set up a template and kind of redid it, taking those steps we mentioned today. And he created this template here. This is actually a, a real customer of ours. It's This new template may not be perfect, but it is easy to read. The information is shorter and it looks great on a mobile phone. He actually sent two emails and made over $900 just because of these changes he made. He has a, a very big call to action. You might not want that much text on a button, but it's definitely much clearer than the other one. He followed our simple system here, and now he's sending more emails and getting better results too. So let's review those seven essential elements of design. We have the header information and pre-header text, so your readers are enticed to open the email, branded logo and colors, an image to connect your readers to your message, the message body to provide the details to drive people to, the call to action, and the footer information which allows them to get in touch with you. We do have a handout that is in the GoToWebinar menu. 
you can click to download that. We'll save it in, or we'll send it in the follow-up email as well. That actually has all the seven steps on there for you. So you can kind of go through even as a, a little checklist as you're creating your first email. And then also remember, keep it simple. Remember those three questions. What are you offering, which is the headline? How will it help the reader, which is your body text? And that what should they do next, which is the call to action? These questions help you easily write the content of an email campaign. And then definitely get started by creating your reusable template. You'll save yourself a ton of time on future emails and provide a consistent look and feel that gets your readers to take action. After the session today, log in to your account, start creating that template right away. And we are here to help if you need it, if you're short on time and just need some additional help, struggling a little bit with some of the, the images or design elements. We do actually have a team that cre creates custom templates for you. They're a design team and they take a look at your website and help build those out for you. Those start at $79. Let me save or give you a link that you can save if you would like to request a template and have someone set that up for you. Otherwise though, let's get to your questions if you have any more. And as those are being sent in, I do wanna let you know about an upcoming webinar called How to Upload and Manage Your Contacts with Constant Contact. That is coming up tomorrow at 11 a.m. Eastern Time. Let me give you the registration link. So this is the next step. Once you've created an email, you do need to upload your contacts so that you have a list to send to. As you saw on the page where I was scheduling the email, I already had my list in there and ready to go. So this webinar shows you how to do all of that. It's uh, an hour long, another free session. If you can't attend live, we'll send you a rec recording as well. So feel free to sign up for that to get that information. And let me share our other help resources while we're waiting for those questions to come in. put that in the chat. So if you go to that support and resources page, Buzz, look for the phone numbers will be listed there with the hours and that's the the um, the numbers you can call into. That's where you'll find that phone number, the constantcontact.com slash help. Melissa has a good question. Is there a way to add your own brand font to the email? So there's not a way to add a font that isn't in here, but let me highlight this. There are quite a few fonts built in, but if one of these is not the one you wanna use, unfortunately you can't add that in. So you could try to look for something close and that's what you'd have to go with. The reason why it's somewhat limited is especially we have these ones at the top above the line here. Different email programs display things differently. Uh, as I was kind of mentioning earlier, that's why it's always good to send yourself a test. And some of the more or less common fonts, I should say, don't always display accurately in like Outlook or Yahoo, you know, they're all slightly different. So it's good to use one of these standard ones just to make sure it looks the same for everyone. But you definitely want to have, you know, the font that goes with your brand as close as possible because that's part of part of the branding. The colors, the logo, and the font is an important part as well. All right. Well, I don't see any other questions. We actually went a couple minutes over here. So, like I said, check out those help resources that I put in the chat. We'll send you an email later this afternoon with our recording and some of these links and the handout will be in that as well. 
But otherwise, thanks for joining us today and have a good rest of your day.